Now, we don't always want to display this new high score panel. We only want it to show if the player reached a score high enough to make it to the top five high scores. So the way we could do that is, well, first of all, let's deactivate this, the new high score panel, okay? And let's come up to the high scores panel itself. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna add an FSM. And in here, I wanna be able to load all the saved data for our high scores and then check if the last high score that the player just got was enough to make it to this list. And if so, then we can open up this new high score panel. Otherwise, we just load the scores and show them here and just put the little press any key to start button back up. So what player prefs is, if I come over here, if I open up my action browser, I'm gonna put this up here. Player prefs are a type of value that Unity can save into a file locally on your player's computer. So this is usually used for stuff like display settings and sound settings whenever your player changes their screen resolution or the volume for certain channels or even whatever language settings they might have set up. But we can really use it to save any sort of data so that when so that when the player closes the game and then they open it again, that some of the data persists, right? Because so far, everything we've made, right? Everything that we've put here in our scene, whenever we press this play button, things sort of just go to these default settings, right? There's nothing that persists between each time that I press play and stop on the game so far. So to actually save that data and to make it persist between each time I'm pressing play and stop, we could make use of player prefs. And, and Playmaker has all these actions to control player prefs. And we're primarily gonna be using uh, these two here, load variable and save variable. So, okay, so first of all, I'm gonna make this little dummy state for init, add a transition, send down to our first state. And in here, I'm gonna put our player prefs load variable. Now, the thing is, when you make use of player prefs, player prefs variables, you can't really see them. You can't really uh, look at them the same way that you look at variables here in the Playmaker variables tab. You can get the information from them and then store them in a variable here in, in Playmaker's variables. The way you do get them and set them is by using keys. And keys are just the name of the variable itself. So right here, when we have this player prefs load variable, let's assume that by the end of this, we'll have made another state that has this save variable action, right right here, where it'll actually create a variable called something like high scores, and the type is an array, and the variable, we have to make a new variable to set that stuff. So uh, we're making uh, high scores, and that is an int array. So we're setting this player prefs variable called high scores with the values that exist in our high scores here from our Playmaker array. It's very similar to the set FSM action. So if you look at a set FSM array, you know, in these ones, in, in set FSM actions, whenever you're setting the value of a variable in another FSM, you do have to type in the name of the variable, right? So say you had some other FSMs, like some other FSM, uh, not here, right? So it's somewhere else. And you can even say that it's like on another game object somewhere. And then you always have to specify the variable name, right? The variable I'm setting, right? So, and then you set it with whatever your variable is. It's the same thing, except instead of that variable uh, existing on an FSM, this is actually a player press variable that's being saved into a little file somewhere on the player's computer. So we have that one, and then let's uh, let's do another one. Player pref save variable. We'll do another one. This one will be high score winners, and this is also an array. Okay, except we'll make a new array here called high score winners, which is a string array. Okay, and we'll set this player prefs with our string array called high score winners. You don't have to name them the same thing, but imagine how confusing it would be if you didn't. We have the logic set up to save those values, right? We're not gonna do that yet, right? Let's just imagine that eventually we have that logic in here somewhere connected to the system. But actually where our FSM starts is by loading the variables. So we have our high scores and the type is array and we're gonna store it in our high scores, right? So we're getting the information from this and then storing it in our high scores variable as opposed to the save actions, which set the high scores variable with whatever is in our local FSM array called high scores. Loading that, and then let's load in one more high score winners. 
and that is an array, it's gonna be our high score winners. Okay, so we're loading both of those values into this. Now, the thing is, we can call this load uh, player prefs, and then finish, we can go down to here, and in here, we can call this state top five scores. So, in this state, we'll check, hey, was the player's last score high enough to make the top five, right? So, like, was it enough to reach even the lowest score on this list? If so, then we could bring up the little initials thing and they could type in their name and then we'll put it wherever it belongs on this list. Uh, and then if not, then we don't open the little initials thing and we just show the game over screen with the high scores from all the previous players. We could just put the logic in first, right? Like, let's sketch out this FSM without actually putting in all the actions. You could say add transition, custom events, yes, and then add transition, custom events, no. So. Does it make it to the top five scores? Yes, okay, so you have logic to actually enter that. So in here, we could put the enter initials. And then if no, we go over here, where it's just game over, okay? Now, the way we can check if it made it to this list is we could put in a couple actions. So we're gonna do an array get, and we're gonna get from our high scores. And the index we wanna get it from is four, because that is our fifth value here, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, right? So so we're going to check against the lowest possible score on here to see if it even makes the list, right? So it at least has to beat that. So we're going to store that value as our score to beat, okay? And then we're going to put in an int compare. And this int compare is going to be comparing a new variable that we can call player last score. We're going to be comparing that to the score to beat. So if the player's last score was equal to or less than the score to beat, then the answer to whether or not it makes it to top five scores is no. So we could set this to no. But if the player's last score was greater than the score to beat, then the answer is yes, we did make it to the top five scores. And then we can enter our initials here. So we need to load the player score first. We can go to this initialized state and we can put in a get FSM int and we can get from our game game object, the FSM name score, and we're getting the score value, saving it locally as our player's last score. Okay, so we have access to the player last score. We have our score to beat and then we can do that comparison and then decide whether or not they make the list. Now, if they do enter their initials, we can activate our new high score panel game object activate game object okay so we're activating our new high score panel and what i want to do right now is go over to our variables tab and take our high scores i'm gonna make this an output okay just so we could see it populate over here and right now as things stand this should just be zero there should be no values in this okay in fact we can even change this to the size is um five values okay so each of these zeros is the scores that correspond to each of these places, right? First place, second place, third place, fourth place, fifth place. Don't get confused with this five up here. This, that's just the size of the array. It's a separate value from these. Right now, if we save this and we go ahead and play, and then we can also turn off our high score panel and we go ahead and, okay. And I'm gonna turn on our press any key to start play this. Okay, so we're just waiting for the game to start. Uh, we're looking at these high scores. There's currently nothing in them. If we look at this, all these are still zero. And of course, this logic went through. It loaded the player prefs, nothing but zeros. And of course, our player's last score was zero, so we could just send it to game over. All right, so that makes sense. It went to game over. Now, if we start this, okay, and then we shoot a bunch. Okay, so now we have 70 points, which at this point should be higher score than zero. All right, I'm gonna die. And one more life. Oh, come on. Okay, dead. Now it took me here and it is activating the initials thing. And sure enough, you look at our high score panels here. It says, did we make it to the top five scores? Yes, enter the initials, see? So we loaded the player preps, they're all zero, and when it did this compare, it got our player's last score, which was 70, and that's our score to beat, so we can now enter our initials. Now the logic isn't done yet, because of course we could 
uh, you know, we're doing this, we're just, right, we just enter our initials, nothing happens. So the next steps would be, if you want to enter your initials here, to actually save that high score, right? Let's do that.